thank you to Dr. Kim Washington for nominating me for this prestigious award. And thank you to Career Communications Group and the Women of Color Award Selection Committee for selecting me to receive the 2018 Technologist of the Year. And thank you, God, for this awesome blessing. I grew up on Prairie Street in Detroit in a middle-class family in a neighborhood where all of the parents on the block considered you their own. We were taught to believe that we could do anything, and we sure tried. In elementary school, I wanted to be like my dad, a carpenter. So I chose woodshop over home economics. I quickly became fond of math and science, and my mother nurtured that, ensuring that I participated in programs and events, camps that would help expand my young mind. School was always a competitive thing for me. My dad rewarded me for every A. So doing well meant doing well financially. I was the most fiscally responsible preteen you'd ever met. Growing up, I wasn't really sure where my love for STEM would lead me. Unfortunately, in the world we live in, there aren't too many paths laid out for an African-American girl from Detroit interested in learning about how things worked. So I decided to forge my own. That path included taking the bus on 14th Street in Detroit's Boston Edison District to Cass Tech, waiting through four or five buses, sometimes in knee-high snow, before one would pick me up. At Cass, I studied business administration and soon discovered that computers intrigued me. The hardware, the, soft, the software, the newness. In high school, my mother made sure that I knew that not going to college was never an option. She had much greater plans for me than I had for myself. When I decided I wanted to study computer science, she recommended instead that I consider electrical engineering. She knew that a degree in electrical engineering would allow me the flexibility to work on computers or any other electrical devices that piqued my interest. My mother was insistent that I remain close to home, and I did, attending Lawrence Institute of Technology, now Lawrence Technological University, here in Michigan. My family was not in a situation or a position to pay for college, so I secured funds through scholarships, grants, and loans. I started my Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering at LIT, excited and eager to make my mark, and I received straight A's. However, during my first semester, my world came to a, came, uh, was shattered, <laughs> I'm sorry. My mother, my best friend, she passed away unexpectedly. This was the biggest blow to my life. I had no idea how I would recover. It took me a few trimesters to regroup, pull things together, and improve my grades because I had to maintain my scholarship. After getting back on track, I graduated from LTU and went to work for Dow Chemical Company, and that's in Midland, Michigan. I was given tasks like soldering, wire stripping, creating circuit boards, and testing prototype computers. During my first year there, I married my husband, Greg, and we began to grow our family. After three years at Dow, Greg and I decided it was time to go back to Detroit. I put my resume out to various country, uh, companies and Ford Motor Company called me back. I started out at Ford in the newly created Electrical and Electronic Systems Engineering Organization as an electrical systems engineer. There, I had the opportunity to work on many first to four technologies, generic electronic modules that did many different functions. The award-winning Taurus, I worked on the electrical system, 
the first in industry sync infotainment system and the fuel efficient stop start technology. Soon after, I began to work on my energy lifestyle, a real life solution to improving CO2 emissions. I was then given an opportunity to work in quality for Ford's electrical systems globally. I started with delivering the newly designed sync system to our customers. And according to JD Power, we improved quality more than any other OEM. Soon afterwards, I found myself on a whole new journey to Silicon Valley. I was told that my job was to protect the future of Ford Motor Company. While in Palo Alto, I was responsible for leading the research and innovation team and creating a space where engineers, researchers, and scientists could design the future. From artificial intelligence and machine learning to sensors and self-driving cars. The facility will be the first of its kind at Ford and allow cross-functional teams to work together on human-centered designs. The aim? to deliver Ford's vision of designing smart vehicles for a smart world. I delivered on that goal, and now I'm back in the D. <laughs> I'm back. Working with US Car on protecting the future of mobility in the United States, I love what I do. But no matter how exciting projects, how many exciting projects I get to work on or problems I get to solve, none of it will be possible without the support of an incredible family. First, my mother, the best friend that let me, led me down this path of success. Through tough times, my dad Lee, my sister and brother Monica and Gary, and my mother-in-law Pecola have been my positive source of energy. My husband, Greg, with his proud text, shares all my accomplishments with everyone and their mothers. <laughs> and my amazing daughters, Ebony and Patrice, have exceeded my ex expectations and from the day they were born, been my motivation to succeed. My family keeps me grounded while accepting and nurturing my need to keep learning. After starting at Ford, I was encouraged to go back to school to complete my master's in engineering. And because of who I am, I completed two masters, <laughs> both in engineering. One in electronics and computer control systems and the other in engineering management. After working in such a male-dominated industry for so long, you want to wake up feeling like a boss. So I made it happen. Now I'm back in school working on a PhD in industrial and systems engineering. You know, I used to think keeping my head down, working hard and getting the job done would move me to the top quickly. I wasn't aware of the politics involved and how they impacted my ability to progress. But positive reinforcement, and Apple opportunities provided by those willing to see my potential were the stepping stones to being the fierce leader I am today. They say it takes a village to raise a child. The same holds true for your career. It takes the strength of God and the village of empathetic and passionate peers that inspire, advocate for, support, and encourage you. The list of those that have been my village is extensive but a few key people stand out. Rita Lefebvre was the first person to believe in me and my abilities to lead. Dr. Verinder Modgill supported me during my time as the LTU Alumni Association President. And lastly, Dr. Ken Washington took an interest in my career and introduced me to the world of Bea. And for that, I am, in, I am truly grateful. People look at me and think things have been easy, but many trials and tribulations have helped shape and mold me into who I am today. The key is to not let things get to you. If you can't change the situation, change the way you think about it. I haven't made it. 
I haven't made it this far in spite of being a black woman. I made it this far because I'm a brilliant black woman. It is an honor and a privilege to be this year's ambassador of women for women of color around the world. I promise I will do the title justice. Thank you. Do you know any outstanding women in the STEM field in your community or organization? Of course you do. Do you want them to be recognized for their accomplishments and contributions to their field? Then nominate them for the Women of Color STEM Conference. The Women of Color STEM Conference hosts several award ceremonies for women who create innovation and inspiration wherever they go. Today, you might see your role model up on stage. Tomorrow, you could be the one accepting one of our awards. To nominate, go to www.ccgheroes.com.